I'm so mad and up to my eyeballs with these preppers. I can't stand it any longer. I figured it's finally time for me to take off the gloves and just let it let it rip. I'm tired of these food hoarding, gun hugging, religious wackos who are putting up all this food and talking about, you know, conspiracy theories and the how the world's going to all end in 2012 or we're going to be all hit by meteors or you know all kinds of crazy stuff and they're just out there they're crazy and then they've got the the leader of the band here this Glenn Beck guy who's just absolutely an idiot everybody knows he's a crazy madman he's telling everybody to uh, save food and and buy gold. He's just in it for the money. I mean, this guy is just such a money monger. It's unbelievable. He's probably worth billions of dollars and he's just working on the fear of people to to buy food and get water and stuff. It's just crazy. And he's talking about people being unemployed and you know how long they're being unemployed and you know the, uh, how bad unemployment is it's all over the United States and people out of jobs. Sure, I know, you know, a few maybe a, a, a lot of people who are out of jobs and but you know that's natural that happens and and he's worried about you know telling everybody there's gonna be a food shortage get your food this is crazy stuff I mean sure I mean, maybe you know there's plenty of food I'm sure there's plenty of food out there and, and yeah so maybe there are riots in some parts of the world because they don't have enough food and but you know this you can forget about it because one thing I know, global warming. What do they call it? What's causing global warming? They call it, uh, what do they call? Um, yeah, they call it greenhouse gases are causing global warming. Well, if you're going to have greenhouse gases, what grows in greenhouse? Food. So you're going to have lots of food. I mean, if we're having global warming, obviously, duh, you're going to have lots of food. And so there's not going to be any food shortages. I mean, that's what global warming's about. And of course, global warming, you know, if you're, in a, if you're in a hot house, then you know there's more rain. And, you know, with more rain, there's more green and food. And so, yeah, there may be some isolated droughts, you know, around the United States somewhere. And there may be some places that have you know mandatory water restrictions but that's you know that's temporary stuff that all go away once global warming gets really into its you know full force and besides that you know on these kills i mean what are the chances of anything happening with you know a catastrophe i mean the chances of an earthquake on these coasts is just like none uh, i mean be serious and then uh, crazy i mean it's like safest place in the world. I mean, who's ever going to worry about a hurricane happening? Are you? But uh, you know what? If anything happens, I'm an American, and I know that the government is here to help, and they're going, and they—that's what they do. That's why I pay my taxes. They're here to help me. And so these crazy nut jobs, you know, if something does happen, you know, just FEMA's going to come. And, I mean, they came during the, you know, the hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff, and they'll take care of us. I mean, that's what they're there for. But anyway, there's these crazy people out here, all these survivalist prepper people. And I just want to give you 10 reasons. I found this, like, underground video. This lady explains with great detail how to talk to these crazy preppers. She gives you 10 reasons why you don't need food storage. I mean, it's brilliant. I, I was going to try to say it myself, but she does it so well. I'm just going to show this next clip of this lady explaining 10 reasons. Then, so if you ever get in a you know, conversation with these crazy prepper people, just remember these 10 reasons you, why you don't need food storage. So listen really closely to this little clip here I found. And take notes, because when you get a hold of a prepper, you want to remember these 10 points. Listen to this. Hi, my name is Wendy DeWitt, and I'd like to thank you for joining me. During the class, I'm going to be referring to a booklet which I've written. It's called Everything Under the Sun. All the information from the class is in this booklet. It's available online. It's free, and you can get it at everythingunderthesunblog.blogspot.com, or you can email at wdewitt.com. 22 
at gmail.com. How many of you have a cell phone? Raise of hands. Almost everyone's got a cell phone. How many of you have a year's supply? Not as many hands go up on that one. In 1987, Ezra Taft Benson said, the counsel to store food may be as essential to your temporal welfare as boarding the ark was in the days of Noah. That's life and death. More recently, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Michael Levitt, was counseling citizens to have at least a three-month supply of food, water, and medicine. I've been teaching this class for more than 20 years, and I've never understood why people have chosen to ignore this kind of wise counsel. I've heard all the excuses, and I finally came up with my own top 10 reasons why I don't have my year supply. Number 10, my neighbors have a two-year supply. <laughs> it's more likely that your neighbors don't have any food at all. Very few people have made the effort to be prepared for an emergency. So if your plan is to eat your neighbor's food, first off, that's probably not very nice, and second off, it's probably not a very good plan. Number nine, I'm just going to move in with my parents or my children. <laughs> not a good plan all by itself. A lot of people believe that when times get bad, we're all just going to band together and we'll share our food and everyone will survive. The problem with that is nobody's sharing food, so we won't survive for very long. And another problem is if you've considered that if there were any kind of epidemic or pandemic, you couldn't band together. You couldn't share. So you may have to survive on just what's in your home. Number eight, isn't that what my taxes are for? <laughs> if there were any kind of national crisis or emergency, how long do you really think it would be before a government agency would reach you? And besides, the government has been telling us to have a three-month supply of food, water, and medicines. Number seven, I donate to my church, and I assume when things get bad, they're just going to take care of me. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting miracles in these times because they're not storing food. Elijah's never-ending barrel, or maybe there's a Joseph of Egypt out there who's storing for everyone. I would suggest that the responsibility to have an emergency supply for your family isn't your neighbors, it isn't the governments, and it's not the churches. It's yours. Number six, I have a year supply and the bullets to go with it. <laughs> I've heard people say, why would I go to all the effort of storing food for my family just to have some guy with a gun come to my home and either threaten or kill my family to take it away? And I respond back, are you afraid of the guy with the gun? Because you should be more afraid of becoming the guy with the gun. What would you be willing to do if you were watching your child starve to death? I promise you would lie, cheat, steal, and you would become the guy with the gun to save your child's life. Food storage isn't just about your temporal welfare. It's also about your spiritual salvation. Number five, the boat and the four-wheelers are taking up all my storage space. <laughs> Number four, I've got a thousand pounds of wheat. What else do I need? <laughs> Unless you're eating that wheat on a daily basis and your body's accustomed to it, that wheat could kill you faster than a famine. Number three, I've decided I'm just going to store non-perishable items and then I'm going to trade for food. I kind of chuckle and thinking, good luck eating those gold coins because when people are starving, they're not going to share their food. They're not going to trade their food. And you know, I guess the other point would be, if they do, you're going to be buying the most expensive bowl of soup that you ever ate. Number two, I can't afford scrapbooking and food storage. <laughs> I like that one. The average food storage can cost as little as a dollar a day. When I ask how many of you have cell phones, I know everyone's going to raise their hand, and I know that you spend more than a dollar a day on that service. Is your cell phone really more important than your family's survival? And the number one reason why I don't have my year's supply I'm waiting for them to sell Papa John's dehydrated pizza. <laughs> food storage has such a stigma attached to it. If it's not wheat, beans, and powdered milk, it can't be food storage. And with the system that I'm going to show you, you could be eating sweet and sour chicken, minestrone, enchiladas, even chocolate chip cookies. 
Your imagination and your pocketbook are just about the only limitations that you have. Most people understand the importance of having emergency supplies. They know they should have it. They want to have it. Sometimes they just don't know how. There are so many questions. What do you store? How do you store it? How do I rotate it? What will it cost? There are so many questions that it becomes overwhelming and they just give up. I'm hoping that in this class I'm going to be able to answer those questions for you and give you a new attitude about food storage. Now the system I used use is based on a worst case scenario. And I recognize there are worst cases, but I'm going to give a survivable worst case scenario that there's no electricity, no running water, no stores to go to, and no help is coming. Even in that scenario, my family can not only survive, but we're going to be eating chocolate brownies. Um, what do you store and how much do you store? You know, she kind of makes sense. Maybe that was the wrong clip I was looking for. Uh, hmm. Well, anyway, I'll just go get my own food if there's a problem, except for, you know, there's probably a lot of preppers out there who are going to protect their food and, you know, hmm. Well, maybe there is something to this prepping thing. I don't know. You know what? I'm an honest man, and you just do the research yourself, okay? I'll put links, you know, this Glenn Beck guy, he's got this like GBTV.com stuff. I'll put a link down the bottom. You can check it out yourself. This lady here who talks about food storage and how easy it is and how you can save money with it. You know, I've, I'll be honest, I, I'll put a link down there. You check it out yourself. You decide whether she's not so. Well, you know, I, get, I, get, I, I need to finish watching this video here. Um, maybe I need to start doing something. But um, you do what you think's right. And uh, hopefully you'll be prepared.